you guys it's hannah welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video today's video is going to be just a chatty catch up hanging out like we're on facetime video mixed with the vibes of going to the nail salon or the hair salon for the first time in a while and catching up with your stylist i used to have before i moved to new york and i actually went and got my nails done Oh, my battery's dying? Mm, perfect. Before I moved to New York and I lived in Pennsylvania, I used to get my nails done all the time. I would always get acrylics because they were so affordable and I absolutely loved my nail tech. Shout out Reese. We would just gossip every three to four weeks and it was so much fun. So today, if you couldn't tell by this weird device I'm holding, today I'm going to be doing my nails. I decided this last night that I felt like putting nails back on and I got myself a new nail kit for black friday i think it was i think i got it from this website called beyond polish which is where i've ordered a lot of my shellac my dip powder my gel polishes i've pretty much all gotten from either there or sally's so i got this kit because it was on sale on black friday and it's the apres nail gel x kit came with the nails i got the short almond ones i've really been liking that shape came with this little light that actually is low-key ass the reason that i do them myself is because First of all, I swear to God, I have looked in New York City for people who do acrylics, specifically acrylics, not dip powder, not whatever, like acrylic nails, like with the, take the brush and you put it in a little liquid and you put in the powder and you build the acrylic nail. You know what I mean? That's what I used to always get. For some reason, I haven't been able to find that. And then I went to this one nail salon last year that said that they did acrylics. I got there, I sit down and it's simply just dip. And I'm like, I have dip powder. I can do that myself. So I'm back to doing my own nails. I've literally only ever gone to the nail salon one time in New York City. I'm like, you know what? If it takes me three hours, that's okay because I can sit in the comfort of my own home, entertain myself, you know, watch like 100 YouTube videos and it's free because I already bought all the supplies. So girl math, that means that now it's free. And also not to brag, but I think I'm kind of decent at this point at doing my nails because I've been doing this for a few years now. So I thought that I would take you through how I do at home nails with my gel X kit and then I put gel polish on top. They last like three to four weeks and I really like them. Don't worry about her, She's that's her water. And also I wanted to catch up. I asked on my Instagram story a few days ago for y'all to ask me questions. I feel like I haven't sat down and just chatted with you, talked about life, given you updates, what's going on. I feel like I haven't just done that in a while. The last time I was doing that was when I was recording my podcast, which that's probably a question that I got asked on here. I haven't looked through them yet. I want them to be a surprise, but I did post after I posted this little question sticker on the podcast Instagram. If you didn't know, I have a podcast, Digital Diary with Hannah Elise. I'm on a bit of a hiatus right now from the podcast, so I'm going to answer that question right now. <laughs> before we even get started. The podcast is usually where I would just kind of like talk about life, give general catch up things that were happening, thoughts I was having at the time, feelings. But I got to a point last month where I just, or was it the month before? It's been a few weeks. I'm on a hiatus right now. I am trying to just figure out what direction I want to go in with the podcast because I love the podcast. I love podcasts so much. I love listening to podcasts and I love making this podcast and how much joy it brings me to hear you guys, those of you who listen to it and enjoy it, tell me that you listen to it and enjoy it. It really means a lot and I want this podcast to be good, obviously for you guys, but also for me, I wanna be proud of it. So I'm just taking a bit of a break with that. We will be circling back. The podcast is not done by any means. We're just gonna have a bit of a pause moment and then we're gonna jump back in. I might make it like a season two thing whenever I figure out what direction I wanna go in and just have a better structure in place. I feel like I started this podcast the end of 2022 with no plan. Like I just started it because I really wanted to and I was like, Fuck it, why not? Hi. I kind of just want to have a direction. It's easier to lose grip on what you're doing if you don't really have a grip on it at all to start with, you know? I don't even know if I got that as a question, but I'm just gonna say that, right, Charlie? I need to replace the battery in this camera because it's dying and I just turned it on five seconds ago. I just been prepping my nails. I took cotton balls, went over them with acetone to get off any polish or anything. I, had. I don't think I had polish on them, but I always do that. And then I just went ahead and I am did one hand, I'm gonna do the other hand, with this little tool that I got from Best Buy a couple years ago that has these little like attachments. It's almost like a drill, but not like, I don't know, the ones at the salon are pretty intense. Is it snowing again? And I'm buffing my nails right now. And I do that so that the polish and all that stuff that I'm about to put on them 
to attach the nail has something to stick to. I've noticed that really helps. I also filed the underside of all my little nails. A lot of prep work, but it ends up being worth it when it extends your manicure to being three to four weeks. I'm gonna switch my battery, buff the other hand, and then we will get into it. Just two long distance besties catching up, having a debrief. Kind of love being my own full service nail salon. All right, buff both hands. About to put this pH bonder on here. And this is just really a dehydrator. And then next I have to put on the non-acidic gel primer. First question, which is so kind is, how are you doing mentally, physically, and getting back on track for the year? This seems like the type of question that should have a straightforward answer, but in some aspects, I'm doing great and I'm thriving. And then in some aspects, I feel so lost and like I have no grasp whatsoever on what the f I'm doing. <laughs> Which I feel like is completely normal. It's normal to not have everything figured out. It's normal and it's okay to have some parts of your life feel really good and feel fulfilled in them. If you watched my 2024 planning video, my word of the year is fulfillment. I just came back from Thailand. Well, not just a few weeks ago, but that trip truly changed my life. Like not even to be dramatic. If you haven't seen my Thailand vlog yet, I worked really hard on it and I'm so proud of it. And I think that it really showcases just the impact that that trip had on me. So I'll link that down in the description. I don't know. I think that that trip truly got me to slow down and breathe and not have to be in complete control of everything all the time because I wasn't in control of, I mean, really anything. I was with a big group. Somebody else was leading us around and telling us what we needed to do. And obviously that's not how real life is gonna be, but it just forced me to stop being a control freak for like 10 days. And that was really nice. Shocker. Hold on. Okay, sorry, I was writing my next steps. I'm putting this Extend Gel. This is how the nail with Gel X cures and like sticks on your, your nail. You put a layer of that onto your nail and then you cure it under this little lamp thingy. And then you put some on the underside of the nail. And like I said, I already went and filed these. So you file it, then you put that stuff on, then you press this nail onto your nail and then put it under the light thingy. This gel is basically the glue. So I've noticed in myself since coming back from that trip that I've had a lot more of a relaxed mindset. Going with the flow, what's meant for me will be type of mindset and just that like, it's really okay. It's not that deep. Am I? I'm sorry, I have to read directions like seven times before I can be like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Is this thing on? Are you dead? Pause. Slay. Okay, anywho, I think mentally my approach has changed just to life in general since my trip. Chilling, going with the flow, realizing that everything will be fine and what's meant for me will be for me and won't pass me by. And just appreciate what you are doing, where you are, who you're with, what you're seeing, the opportunities you have. Just see those things, really see them, be present and appreciate. Those are all things I feel like I really learned and was able to put into practice during my trip that have followed me. So in that way, I feel like I'm doing really well. But on the other side of things, I just still feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I had this whole moment when I was home for a while for the holidays with my family. I was like, what exactly am I doing in New York? I feel like I don't have anything tying me here and I also don't have anything tying me anywhere. So going along with that, it's like, what, where should I be? I know that I don't wanna live in New York forever. I'm just making up questions to answer at this point. If anyone did ask that, no, I don't see myself living here forever. It is so expensive to live here and it's not sustainable long-term. And also I want to settle down eventually in a suburb. I want to own a house. I wanna have a bit of a quieter pace, slower pace, but for right now, I really like living here and living here has, I'm just going on a literal tangent at this point and I'm gonna let myself do it. Living here has changed my life in every single way imaginable. I had no idea the personal growth that I was going to experience when I moved here and it has been profound. Truly has changed my perspective, has changed my attitude, has changed everything about me. And I think 
in a positive way. So this experience is amazing. I don't know, even in the next couple of years, like what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I'm gonna renew this apartment again. I've lived in the same apartment this entire time I've lived here. I don't know if I would wanna move somewhere else. I just really like this place and I'm such a homebody. So when I find something that I really like and it feels like home, why would I leave? But it's, it, they keep raising my rent every year. Clearly there's just a lot of open-ended. So I'm feeling honestly mentally refreshed from my trip, but coming back to reality, I'm realizing I still have so much to figure out. And because of my refreshed mentality, it's been easier for me to be okay with all the questions that I have because I know that I don't have to figure everything out right this second. I know that what is meant for me will not pass me by as long as I'm putting myself out there, as long as I am trying my best every day. But I will be, I would be lying if I said I didn't feel stuck still. I feel like I've been feeling stuck and talking about feeling that way for months and just like there's something missing that I haven't figured out yet and I haven't put that piece together yet, which is frustrating. <laughs> I know that there are things that I can and should and will be doing to try to figure that out because it's not something that I can be passive in. This isn't a process that I can just kind of sit by and see what happens. Like I have to be an active participant when it comes to figuring out what I want in life and what makes me happy and what's best for me. So, was that an answer? It's about as much of an answer as I've got right now, to be honest. Why does this nail always freaking crooked, bro? Is it my fault? Like, am I the problem? Like that's just not right. Is my nail crooked or like what? Whatever, fuck that. Somebody said, please do a reading vlog. I am doing a reading vlog. As we speak, I just started filming it last night actually. Another question, what books do you like to read? I have been so obsessed with fantasy lately and it's just, oh, it makes me so happy. My first fantasy book that I read was in the fall of 2023 and it was Fourth Wing. If you're not new to this channel, you know how I feel about Fourth Wing. If you are new, Fourth Wing changed my life. It catapulted me into my fantasy era, and I'm so glad that it did because after Fourth Wing, while I was waiting for Iron Flame to come out, which is the second book in the series, I read Akatar. Well, I started Akatar, and then I read Iron Flame, and then I continued Akatar. So I read the Akatar series up until Silver Flame. Now I'm just waiting for the next book. I don't know when that's coming out, but absolutely loved. It took me a second to get into Akatar, I'm not gonna lie. Whereas Fourth Wing, I feel like I was immediately enthralled. I don't know, maybe I was just so in love with and obsessed with the characters in the world of Fourth Wing that it took me a second to get into a whole other world. And Akatar has such a Court of Thorns and Roses, by the way, by Sarah J Maas is the series I'm talking about. It has such a complex world, such amazing world building and such complex characters and histories and things like that. So it took me a sec to get into it. I'd say probably like 40 or 50% of the first book, Court of Thorns and Roses, I was like, I don't know, like I wasn't obsessed with it. But then once I kind of got to the end of Court of Thorns and Roses and went into the second book, which is A Court of Mist and Fury. Yeah, I don't even have anything to say. And there's nothing that I can say. A Court of Mist and Fury changed my fucking life. So anyway, I've been heavy into my fantasy reading era and I'm so glad I don't see myself exiting that anytime soon, especially because right now I'm reading Throne of Glass, which is the series that I'm gonna do my first ever reading vlog for since that is a completed series. I just ordered all the books. So I think they're actually supposed to come today. I've read two of them already. I'm on number three and I've been reading them on my Kindle, but I really wanted, I said this in my reading vlog that isn't gonna come out for like another month, I think. This is gonna take me a sec to like read the whole series. It's quite long. Reading just makes me so happy and I'm so excited to make my first reading vlog and I hope y'all like it. I can talk about books more if you guys want. Reading's my favorite thing to do. I look forward to it all day to the, when I get to sit down and read. Oh, it's great. So that's that. Somebody asked me about my dating in New York hot takes. I haven't explored dating in New York City really at all. The only person that I would even say that I've gone on dates with in the city is somebody that I met through a friend of a friend. I've never been on dating apps and that's not a knock to anyone who's on them. It's not a knock to the dating apps themselves. I just don't want to basically. It gives me anxiety. I just want to meet somebody in a setting, in a quote unquote organic way through a friend of a friend out somewhere. Like I just want to have that meet cute. And I don't know if that's too hopeless romantic of me to want in this day and age because it just feels like that just doesn't happen anymore, which is extremely discouraging. Like I look at 
my grandparents. I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. They were married for over 60 years. They loved each other so much, always stuck by each other. And it's just, I feel like stories like that, they're not completely non-existent in today's generation, but it just does feel like there are more few and far between, which for somebody who's like literally a hopeless romantic and somebody who wants that, I don't know, just feels like it's gonna be impossible. I don't know where to find it. I don't know how to find it. I don't know if it's even possible. I don't wanna get my hopes up and then get them crushed. It's a whole thing. So to address all the questions about dating, am I dating? Do I have a boyfriend? Uh, no, no and no. The answer is no. Not that I, don't want one. I don't want to force it. It would be nice. It would be a nice addition to my life, but it's not my end all be all right now. But then I look around at people who have boyfriends or, and who were in love and in secure relationships. And I'm like, damn, that would be so nice. That would be so nice. That'd be so cool. It's just not my time. The person who's for me will not pass by me. They're out there somewhere. I don't know if I'm sounding delusional for saying that and I need to like get a grip and I don't know. I'm having an existential crisis about every day. I'm about to turn 25, which is not at all old, obviously. Still very much young. Funny because I used to think that I'd be married by 25. That's the T. I used to think that when I was younger, I was like, oh yeah, I'll be 25. I'll be married with kids. Like the fuck did I think that I was doing? Like what did I think 25 was? Okay, one hand is done. This is step one. This is just the beginning. We gotta do the other hand. Put these bad boys on. I gotta buff the top of these again and then do the gel process. This is just the gel X process and then the gel polish process is the next part. <laughs> That's why this takes like three hours, it's insane. Somebody asked, how do you enjoy working as a YouTuber and the freelance you're starting up? So if you didn't see the vlog a few months ago where I talked about how I wanted to start a videography sort of freelance business, I made that video, I have made two videos for, I had one for my friend, her birthday, and then I did a couple's shoot with two of my friends for the holidays, which was really cute. I haven't done anything, to be honest, with it since then. It is frigid right now in New York, so hopefully in the spring, I will be more excited to like get out there and shoot. But the thing is that I've realized is that as I've kept saying, I feel like there's something missing in my working life, in my career. This is like probably the main thing I'm gonna talk about. I This wasn't even part of the question, but I went to school, just went to college for marketing because I am so passionate about marketing. I love it. My degree definitely lends itself well to what I'm doing right now as my full-time job, which is making videos, being a content creator. And I know that that's somewhat of a controversial topic on social media, on the internet. It's hard for me to even talk about and come up with the right words to say because what I'm doing right now that is paying my bills and what I'm spending all of my time doing is the dream job. Like my literal dream job that I could have ever imagined for myself. But the here's the raw honest truth. When your hobby turns into your lifeline, it's not a hobby anymore. It's your lifeline. I mean, I get paid to do what I do. And this is not at all to say that I don't love video making content creation. I love it. I truly do. I will always love this and I'm not stopping anytime soon. That's not what this is at all. But it's just, it loses its sparkle when it becomes your livelihood. At least it has for me. Honestly, as a lifestyle vlogger, I feel like I have nothing more to show that isn't boring or repetitive. I love watching people do the most boring shit because it's comforting. And I've gotten comments like that about my content, which makes me truly so happy and feel so good, especially when I'm feeling like my content doesn't add anything doesn't add value. I don't know why, you know, it should take up space. That's another thing I struggle with is taking up space. I got a question about therapy. I'll get to that in a second. I just feel like I want a change. And I thought when I decided to do like a freelancing videography thing, that that would be the answer. And that would fill the gap in fulfillment that I feel in my career. And I haven't even really given it a fair shot. So this isn't fair for me to say, I don't think, but I also am just not convinced that that's gonna be the answer. 
I think that I wanted that to be the answer because I was afraid of the other alternatives, which sounds so silly. I am a creature of habit. I love things <laughs> that are comfortable. I love things that I know. I love the familiarity. But I also know that growth does not happen inside your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is a great place, but nothing ever grows there. I've said that a million times. And it's so funny, like I always say that and then I don't practice what I preach. And I too, like I'm saying that partly to manifest it for myself, partly to encourage anyone listening. But then at the same time, I can't take my own advice. I'm too afraid to confront that truth. So I just think that I need to do something completely different that's not on my own. I honestly really do want to branch out and look for, find, you know, something that works with marketing, works on a team, works with other people, and the focus is not myself. I think that's my issue, among other things, like my lack of self-discipline and all of that. <laughs> but one of my biggest issues is that I've shown so much of the same stuff over the past few years of what I do, and I just feel like it's not, I don't know. I want to have something that I do for work that is completely not about me, and also, where my paycheck does not rely on popularity or people watching or people liking me, that stresses me out so much. Cause it's like, what if people don't like me? If people don't like me, then no one's gonna wanna watch my videos. I won't be able to make any money. I won't be able to afford, especially to live in New York. It just feels like everything will crumble if people don't like me. And having those thoughts every single day and obsessing over the general opinion that other people have of you that is completely out of my control is exhausting. All this to say, if I leave that in, that's gonna be crazy. Cause I, I feel like I can't talk about this because it sounds like I'm complaining and I'm not, I'm really, really not. This is just simply how I feel. That's that, that's the tea. I've never actually said this out loud before. Okay, we are on the home stretch already, aren't we Charlie? My nails, are all filed, ready to put on my foundation for my gel polish. We're gonna do two coats of gel polish and then one coat of top, and that's it. I'm really excited about these. I feel like they're gonna look so good. I love this length. I love this shape. I love that I'm doing it at home. The reason I never talk about doing this as my job and all of that is because I never want anything that I say to come off like I am not grateful or that I'm complaining because that is completely not at all how I feel. I love that I get to do this and get to is the key word because it is an immense privilege. I don't talk about some of the like quote unquote negative things because I just feel like no matter what I say, I will come off as not at all how I feel or how I intend. So I just don't say anything at all because it's easier. But point is I will continue creating content. I love doing this. I just want to do something else also right now at this point in my life. And I want it to be something completely outside of myself. So I have been applying to marketing jobs and I'm applying to these places expecting fully to never hear from them because that's all that I hear <laughs> about so many fields right now people trying to get jobs. And then there's the added part where I feel like my experience won't necessarily be taken seriously in like a corporate space. I've basically been doing freelance advertising for the last five years of my life, which, oh, did this thing die again? Bro, this is really on my last nerve. I don't know, I just feel like I won't be taken seriously, so I'm nervous. Like, I still have a resume and I create it to the best of my ability. And I think that my experience is valuable. So I guess, honestly, it doesn't matter if people don't think that it's valuable because I, again, have to believe that the right place, the right people will. Everything else doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter what other people think or value or don't value because anyone who doesn't value me isn't the right person for me, not the right place for me, not the right thing for me, period. And I have, the luxury and the privilege to feel that way about my job search because I obviously still am doing my regular work. And even if and when I do find something else, I won't stop doing this because this is what I've built and worked so hard for and what I love. I just, I don't know, is this making sense? I've been applying to companies, to agencies. Yeah, I haven't heard anything back yet. It's only been a couple weeks, but I'll obviously keep you guys updated on that. That's just how I've been feeling. And I don't know, it's 
it's just what I think I want to do at this point in my life. It doesn't mean that I have to be married to any decision that I make. It doesn't mean that if something ends up not feeling right that I can't switch directions and do something else. Like that's all completely allowed to do. So I'm not stuck anywhere. I'm not married to anything. And I think when I remind myself of that, it makes me feel so much better about just trying something, you know? Just, I get so in my head in every way possible about everything in my life, literally. And then I talk myself out of stuff because I freak myself out too much about literally everything and the implications in every way that anything could be affected ever. But I am trying really hard to break that. Oh, and let me let use this to segue into the therapy question. I put therapy as one of my 2024 goals. My number one goal is to find a therapist and start seeing them regularly and having somebody to talk to and hopefully give me tools to help with my anxiety and my OCD and test me for ADD. Have I done that yet? No, it is mid-February and I will do it by the end of February. My plan is to reach out to like three to five therapists. I'm gonna use psychology today. Probably it's just a website, a big database of a bunch of therapists and you can filter by this is not sponsored, obviously, but you can filter by your location, your insurance, remote or in person. You can read reviews on them and you can message them and set up a little like 15 minute free consultation sort of thing to see if you vibe, which I definitely want to do because I've gone through several different therapists in my life. Mostly when I was younger, I was in and out of therapy, therapy by myself, family therapy, so they were nice, but I just didn't really find what I was looking for. And I think that that scared me just because I I had to go through my whole friggin' life story and my whole spiel with all of these people only for it to eventually like me stop going because I don't feel like I'm necessarily vibing with them. And I know that that's just a part of the process. Like that's what I have to do in order to find the right one. It's like dating, honestly. You kind of have to go through all the people that aren't right for you and yes you have to be vulnerable and tell them your life story over and over and over and over again and i think that's the part i'm just like i don't want to do that i don't really feel like talking about every traumatic thing that's happened to me that's made me who i am today <laughs> like i just simply don't want to do that but i know that i have to if i want to find somebody to help me so it's gonna be worth it it's just like oh i'm gonna freak out like this light is really starting to piss me off starting to. So that's where I'm at with that. I really hope this is curing right. I'm gonna put on my second coat. Hopefully that will be good enough. I've never done black. I'm so excited. I finally got black gel polish. How I have not done black gel polish yet is beyond me as well because it's all I freaking wear as you can tell by my outfit right now. This hand always looks pretty decent and then it gets to the other hand where I'm painting with my non-dominant and it gets ugly. I feel like that really does sum up my current situation though, my current mindset. I did see a couple of travel related questions, places that I wanna travel next. And one thing that I did end up setting a goal for because of my trip to Thailand is I put on my life bucket list that I want to visit all seven continents in my lifetime. My trip to Thailand made me so much more confident in my abilities as a traveler and granted I was with a group of people and I wasn't planning a single thing. I was literally just showing up. But just the fact that I did it and I got myself over there and I enjoyed it so, so much and got to see a completely new and different place, new culture and just learn so much about it and appreciate it. It made me want to travel literally everywhere. <laughs> I have such a long list of places that I want to go. It just opened my eyes so much to the fact that we are all so, and not to be say this in like a bad way, but we are all so insignificant in the grand scheme of the world. It's just so much bigger than ourselves. It's so interesting. I think this all the time, like when I'm passing people on the street or like when I'm home and I'm driving my car and I see other people in their cars, I'm like, these people, they all have their own lives, their own problems that they probably also feel like are the end all be all. They probably feel so overwhelmed by something and I'm just driving by or walking by. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about their lives. I don't know anything about this problem that they're having. I don't know, like we each individually have our own set of that. It's just so cool. And it just makes me feel so small, but in a good way. We are all so 
similar. Like people, human beings have so much more in common than they don't. So getting to see people on the other side of the literal world, how they operate, what their culture is like, what their day-to-day -day is like, what their surroundings are like, and completely take myself out of my own set of those circumstances, my own surroundings, made me just feel so small in a really beautiful way. So I wanna go everywhere. I really wanna go to Australia and New Zealand. And I realize that's even farther than where I just went, but I wanna go so bad. I met a couple of Australians when we were in Thailand and I loved them and I'm like, I really wanna visit your country, so see you soon. Oh, by the way, here are my nails. I'm obsessed. I'm about to put this top coat on. Top gel coat, non-white. I'll probably still wipe it anyway because I get nervous. And then I'm gonna move on to the other hand. I'm actually making great time, I think. I really wanna go to Japan in the near future, in the next couple of years. Emma went from Thailand to Japan to visit a friend there and she was sending us pictures and just looked like she was having the most incredible time. My brother has been to Japan. He absolutely loved it. I also wanna go to Spain. I wanna go to Brazil. I've never even been to Canada. Like I gotta go to Canada. I'm realizing that if I wanna go to all seven continents, then I gotta make my way to Antarctica at some point. <laughs> so that should be interesting. I have so many places I wanna go. I wanna go back to London also. I mean, obviously I've already been there, but I love it so much and I miss it already, even though I was there not too, too long ago. So I'm hoping again, I don't know, seeing what, what plays out in my life, what my schedule's like, I'd love Love, 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 love to make it back over to London. I've hit three of the continents so far. Where to go? I'm really excited. These look like stiletto heels to me for some reason, and I'm really obsessed with that. We're getting there, people. Charlie's fully snoring back there. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> She's so cute. All right, everyone. Yes! We're f***ing done. This took like maybe two hours. I don't know. I think I did pretty, pretty all right on time. I think they also look pretty good. I love being able to do this myself. It makes me so happy. That's gonna need to be it. I've been recording for so long. We've covered, honestly, a lot, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> I actually don't even remember what I said at all. So I guess when I go back and edit this right now, I will know. If anyone was wondering how I do my nails, now you know. I'm gonna link as many of the little products that I use for my nails down below in case y'all want to try this out. This is actually a really simple process. It just takes forever, but like, again, I'd rather be in the comfort of my own home doing this for free. I could turn on a movie or something or a podcast and have some fun like entertainment time while doing these. And I love the way that they turn out. Like I just, I always feel so proud of myself. So anyway, all right, that's it for today's video. Oh, I just really wanted to sit and chat and catch up. And I feel like I got a lot of thoughts out that I really needed to get out. So <laughs> mission accomplished. Thank you so much for watching. If you've stayed until this point in the video, comment down below, I'm a real one because you're a real one. I love you so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.